so it's the start of the afternoon term. Um, Napoleon has a problem. Um, he has uh, two two turns. Where is he there? He has two turns in which to um, perform his action. Essentially, he is hoping to um, push through the Allied line um, uh, before nightfall, so that he can he can take uh, their line of supply, which will demoralise the army. Um, but he's of course he's in grave danger because. Uh, the Allied forces are enveloping around to his line of supply. So um, at the start of the turn, you start with uh, putting units in command. Uh, so Grouchy over here um, put these two cavalry units in command to send them over to the left flank. And uh, Napoleon, with a command of three, has uh, put them um, and the the Imperial Guard in command to continue their push forward. Um, uh, last turn the uh, French took these two hexes and um, they were not counter-attacked by um, the Anglo-Allied forces who the French guess and quite rightly are not that strong opposite them. Um, this uh, game is quite interesting because it offers a few optional rules so uh, the general rules state that in, if in zone of control you must attack. Um, the optional rule is that if in the zone of control you can decide to attack, but if you do attack you must attack every unit within the linked zone of controls. Um, so you can't just sort of, well, okay, that you understand. Um, so I, I, I decided that um, you I decided to take the optional rule, except that when you move into a zone of control, you have to attack. So if you if you start the turn in a zone of control, you don't have to attack. Um, so I don't fancy Napoleon's chances much. Um, there's reinforcements coming in. Um, on the Anglo Arids allied side, a couple of odd ones there, and these Prussians here. Um, Dulon's corps is uh, out of command, which means he can't advance after combat. He won't be able to force march, but essentially he's going to move around here to surround these troops to so hopefully eliminate a whole set of Prussian forces and um, the guard and Who's this? This is the sixth corps, Mouton's corps, will be um, pressing the attack um, on these forces here. So uh, Napoleon's got a good chance of taking the supply line, and the Allies have a good chance of taking his supply line. Um, so the question is going to be who will crack first? Um, well, we shall see. Let's pull Napoleon's initiative chip, which essentially is a movement rate of a turn. Okay, lucky blighter, he gets the full, so that's four, four movement for four for infantry and artillery and six for the cavalry. and. Uh, I uh, said Napoleon was a lucky blighter getting the 4-6 initiative chip, but uh, in actual fact he's got uh, two of them in the pot, and uh, with four chips in total at the start of the turn, he had a 50-50 chance of picking one. So, you see this game now, it gives you, it's not wildly random in the chip pull, it gives you the chance of uh, making some good gambles, um, but without certainty of success. So this unit is out of supply, which uh, just means it's demoralised, which means it cannot advance after combat and it cannot uh, force march. An um, in interesting uh, difference in this game is that uh, defenders can advance after combat. Well, this combat is uh, 
he's plus 50%, so it's 9 against 18. They have him surrounded. Um, we look on the combat chart, so 2 to 1. The roll of 6 is not good attack or retreat. So you can see that could have been an exchange. Uh, fortunately, I guess it's not an exchange, but then the attackers have to retreat, which is a shame. So I move them back, which is a shame because these guys have placed themselves in this chateau to guard this road. The chateau gives them, I think, double defensive benefit. Uh, we'll retreat them further up the road and we'll retreat them to some left. Uh, so he could advance after combat, which I think he's going to do. He'll take the chateau, I guess, on a brief counter attack. But he's still out of supply. That will only change, I think, at the next night turn. Um, okay. We have a massive assault here. The whole of um, the first and second and third French corps versus a somewhat depleted second corps of the Prussian army. Um, they're in a village, so their total is it's t 25 and a half strength points versus. 45, which isn't, doesn't quite make it 2 to 1, but it does make it 1.5 to 1, and it's a combined arms attack, not exclusively over rivers, so they'll go up the one combat column shift, so roll of 2 on 2 to 1 gives us defender retreat 2. And that, of course, was absolutely what was hoped for because uh, they cannot retreat into enemy zone of control. Um, a friendly unit does not negate enemy zone of control, so these guys will all be permanently eliminated. But note that um, First Corps was out of command, so they will not be able to advance after combat. Um, Third Corps was in command, so they will be able to advance after combat. But note the artillery wouldn't. I think there's some artillery here, they cannot go, uh, go over the rivers, they would have to go over a, a bridge which is not on their side. Okay, a disaster has occurred. Um, because of the, uh, the attack here, um, it creates a, a cascade of knock-on effect in that all of, these, um, all of these allied units are going to have to be attacked. Um, the idea was that there's a the guards artillery here was going to do a diversionary attack on this, um, so it's a bombardment. The artillery will not be affected by adverse results, while the rest of the stack attacks across here and here. Well, actually, think about it. You're not allowed to split the stacks, attacks of stacks like that. Um, maybe you account for bombardment. Anyway, that was my plan, um, but it's uh, this hex side is a woods hex side. There's no bombardment across the woods hex side. So the attack, uh, a breakdown in communications or, or, or something, the artillery commander's information to Napoleon was incorrect. Um, the attack has to go ahead, so that, uh, it will be a regular attack from... Maybe I could take it not from the artillery. I can't commit the old guard to an attack because they, if they that kind of weak attack, because if they are defeated, um, there's a big morale loss, to, I think the whole rest of the army becomes demoralised. So I could send in the Gars Cavalry, which is going to be a 5 to 1, 1 to 5 odds, so 50% chance of eliminating them. They're going to have to save, save the day, sacrifice themselves, so yes, the Gars Although, like I said, you're not supposed to split attacks across stacks like that. Um, I would have had to move things differently, and I'm not going to do the movement back now, so uh, it's a solo game. I can take that. Oh, no, sorry. Uh, cavalry can't charge across words either, can they? Okay, so it has to be the artillery. No, yes, artillery, regular attack. Eight. To ten, one to one and a half points. Oh dear, the worst possible wrong. Gonna be eleven. No, attack a half. 
to half the attacker's strength while it's illuminated, but you can't break down, you can't reduce these stacks, but you can't reduce a unit in play. It only gets a flip to its reduced side after it has entered the reorganisation box. Um, so uh, when it moves to the knight it will get flipped. You can see the, these were all the casualties from the morning attack which was nicely balanced against the uh, Anglo-Allied casualties from the same morning assault. I mean I, the, the French got, got the better of the, um, the damage there. Um, okay so that's diversionary attack so to say strictly wasn't legal but anyway that that, that worked um, so I kind of showing you how the system works I'm showing you by showing you how it's not supposed to work um, I'll figure out the other attacks at the odds and roll the dice ah I figured out what to do to make things right um, essentially uh, uh, these units will attack this hex and then these two hexes have to attack all those three hexes combined so instead of that last the combat I've added them together and oops no I've forgotten <laughs> what the odds were but it was um, okay I'll, I'll, we, okay yes it's uh, 31 strength points for the French and uh, 27 for the Anglo allied, which means um, it's the one to one column, uh, a one column shift because it's uh, there's Napoleon there, another one column shift for combined arms attack. So we're on the two to one column, and I will take the um, what I rolled before, which was attack a half. So, which it was six, so um, two to one on six is attack or retreat. Okay, so, and that means all of these folks will have to come back. Um, let me just see, there's artillery there, which won't be able to. They will come over here. I think they will have to retreat as a stack. Oops, sorry. Do can't see what I'm doing and I can't do what I'm doing properly making a mess. Okay, so the artillery had to come over the bridge. And those folks can quite simply come back here. And so um, they have the opportunity to advance after combat which yes they will take. Um, you can only have two infantry divisions or, well, units, so they could be divisions or even brigades in a hex. Um, okay. Okay, so the, um, the, uh, the Allies have advanced in, it could not advance the artillery, um, so just two, oh, sorry, here, these Texas two, these are quite small infantry units, but it's the best they can do. Um, so this stack has to attack these, it's a two to one attack. Best result possible, uh, not combined arms. Um, it's defender half, so the defender loses half their strength points. They've only got one unit there, so that will be the whole unit. And the, the leader sort of scoots to the next friendly unit. And uh, that's the end of the French turn. So uh, we'll see how the uh, Allies do in their counter-attacks and uh, manoeuvres in the afternoon of the 17th.